Hi Aries, welcome to SoapQuest, I'm Spence. So guys, this is going to be a weekly reading for you for the week of November 1st through the 7th. So yep, we're in November, if you can believe it. I hope you had a really happy Halloween. And if you're watching this on the weekend of Halloween, then happy Halloween and have a great time. Be safe, okay, but have a great time. Today we're going to use the Thalema Matera. This is by Renata Lechner, and I love it very much. So it's going to be a beautiful deck for us to use today. Beautiful autumn colors, moodiness about it that I like. And we're also going to use the Sacred Earth Oracle today. This is by Tony Carmine Salerno with the artwork of Leela J. Williams. Okay, I hope you enjoy those decks. I think they're beautiful. All right, so those in mind, I'm going to start shuffling for the Aries. It's a big week in that there is a new moon this week on the 4th. That will be Thursday. Before that, we've got a couple of energies we should talk about. First of all, um, on the first, Mercury trines Jupiter. I really like that for a good conversation. Really good conversation that kind of opens up. Hmm. It's like it just opens up the, the, the bridge for communication. I like that a lot. Now, the very next day on the second, Mercury squares Pluto. So that's when, on the very next day, we may actually be problem solving. It's like we've opened a bridge to conversation and then a little problem solving, perhaps. All right, then on the 4th, I said that new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio new moon is the beginning of something, but it's like every month. It's like we're in a, a particular season, right? And every single season, which is four weeks, every sign of the zodiac, um, then we have these two lunations, the new moon that's in the sign and the season that we're in, and then its opposite axis or the full moon in its opposite sign. So this week is the new moon in the sign of Scorpio, which means the sun and the moon are both in Scorpio. And directly across, however, in direct opposition, it is opposite Uranus, I believe. I did not, yes, Uranus and Taurus. So that can really be surprise. It could be like, bam, we're going to start something, right? But remember that it's in Scorpio, and Scorpio is about really deep emotional feelings. So it's about what you really feel, what you really want, what you've really been working on internally, and just, just deciding, I'm worth it. That's kind of the feeling it gives that I get from it. It's like, I'm worth it. I'm going to go for it, right? So I like that a lot. All right, then on the 5th, we've got Mercury in school, moving into Scorpio. And Venus moves into Capricorn, which can be very good for finance, financial planning or even planning about how to structure finances over the next couple of months, especially the holidays. I think Aries might come into play. And remember, Venus is going to be going into retrograde, so this is a time to be frugal and plan well. Plan well for the holidays if you're traveling, if you're buying presents, just things like that, right? How we're going to spend our money. So saving right now for the holidays will probably be well aspected with Venus moving into Capricorn. I like that. All right, so we'll talk more about the new moon as we go along. Right now I'm shuffling for you from this Sacred Earth Oracle. I have to look at the title for, for myself so I remember the titles. <laughs> so how are you, Aries? I hope you're well. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Introduce yourself. All right, so today, a Sacred Earth Oracle message for you. See what I feel. You Aries. I am going to read a portion, a little excerpt from the book for you. Because I think that the writers never get enough play. There we go. Aries. Dependability. I like that. Okay. Dependability Aries. It's interesting because Scorpio is the eighth house of dependability, of what we can depend on, who we trust, who supports us financially helps to support us in the household, right? Can be financial help that we get coming in from any type of financial institutions, bank loans, tax refunds, like things that are owed to us, things like that. So dependability, we'll take a look at that in just a minute and see what that might be for you. Aries. That is your eighth house, so it could be money coming in for you from an outside source. So if you're trying to get, let's say, a grant for school or a loan, that could bode well for now. 
And then uh, later with Venus in retrograde, we can talk about how that might be affected later on as we move into uh, the middle part of December. All right, so I shuffled these plenty before the camera was turned on, but Aries, I had to shuffle just a little bit more for you on camera. See if I can get my hands to work. It's always, of course, I do your sign first, and it helps me just kind of get into the flow of the zodiac, but I have to say, it's when I bumble the most, <laughs> both verbally and my hands, bumbling about, trying to shuffle. Okay, that feels good. So I'm going to cut the deck for you, Aries, and we'll get going. For your new moon in Scorpio, Aries, let's see what we're talking about today. We know we're talking about dependability. I'm going to tell you what each of these cards are, and of course I'm going to show you every single card on the table, reading horizontally, vertically, and big picture for you today. And I'll let you know what I see as far as any astrological influences that might come up. All right. Yes, something owed to you could be coming in. Could be getting news about that. Something could, could be coming back around like a lost opportunity, it seems to me. All right, bottom of the deck, three cards. Interesting. Back in touch with your family again. Perhaps more moral support from the family could be coming in for you. I love that. I definitely see some serious love vibes here. All right, so let's look at dependability first. For you today and for the week of November 1st through the 7th, Aries, it says, dependability. Something that sounds too good to be true, probably and usually is. Choose dependability over grandiose promises. Stay focused and stick to your goals. Stating something loudly and repeatedly doesn't necessarily make it true. Do not, so don't be distracted by secondhand or ill-informed Ill opinions. The truth always has a way of revealing itself. You don't need to get involved. Turn to or be someone that you can trust. Listen and respect all points of view, but in the end, you must be true to yourself. Put your faith in the great compassion of your heart and find comfort in knowing that love is the greatest law of all. In the arms of Mother Earth, you find acceptance, clarity, and the beauty you can depend on. The law of love is always absolute. Before you accept a truth as absolute, put it to the test. It is as true for the weak, or excuse me, is it as true for the weak as it is for the strong? Is it as right for the rich as it is for the poor? The laws of the universe have no bias. We can depend on them regardless of age, wealth, culture, or status. Okay, so if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably something that you might want to take a second look at. It's time to be frugal, careful, right? And to definitely depend on the people you can depend on, the people whose word you know you can trust, I think is the message of this and not to be distracted by others' opinions or input when really you need to go to the people that you can trust. You can listen to people's advice, but also in the end, really look within, because isn't that the, the case, honestly, with Scorpio? Scorpio is the deepest ocean. It's the deepest feelings that we actually have. And it's very much a house about trust. First and foremost, trust yourself, right? And then you can depend on the people that you trust that you do depend on as long as it doesn't conflict with your ability to trust yourself as well, to know what's best for you, Aries. So knowing what's best for you. On the bottom of the deck, I'm definitely seeing love themes. This is usually what's internal that we're sort of considering coming up from the subconscious, right, going on. And what I'm seeing here is a change. A change in your life where joy, family, love, happiness, and those things can abound. Right? We're coming into holiday season, and this is the time of the year when we kind of do look back at the year in retrospect. And we do want to spend the time that we have with the people, our family, our friend family, the people that we love to celebrate moments in time with, right? So especially over the holidays, for example, 
it is a good time that we get together with our family and that we have a great time being together. Right now, I know a lot of families don't function that way. So some people turn to their friend family or if you're separate from your family, you can be with your friend family. But I think it's a time where you really want to feel that way. You want to feel the togetherness with the Ten of Cups, right? You want to feel the change of season into this season of being with people that you trust and you can feel completely compatible and at ease with the people that love you, the people that you love back, the people that you're committed to, and the people that are committed to you. That's what I think you're thinking about right now, and that makes perfect sense. That's the people you can depend on. So whether this is about a love relationship, a marriage, um, falling in love with someone new, or friendship, right? It can be also about your family. One way or another, I think it might be a beautiful time for you. Because looking deep within, in Scorpio season, it usually harkens back, one way or another, to our family. And how we feel good about ourselves, either despite our family or because of our family and the way we were raised, right? And those family dynamics with the Ten of Cups, right? So this is about your happiness and this is about how you share love with others, okay? Whether it's friends, family, or love with lovers, uh, you know, so one way or the other. All right, going across the horizontal, I see the Page of Pentacles, the Eight of Wands, and the Three of Wands. So the Page of Pentacles is usually a piece of information that you have that's very real. And with the Eight of Wands, this is news coming in that's very realistic. It could be about finances. It could be about your day-to-day -day life, your job. It could be about plans. But this is communication going back and forth about something very real with the suit of Earth. And the pages, like I said, usually messages. So about something that you're planning, the future that you want to come in. So this seems to me like it's either a financial plan or a plan of how, you know, because very much the pentacles can be about time, right? The pentacle suit of earth is what, what we do over time. So this is planning our time well as well, right? Planning for this change of season, maybe holiday season coming upon you. And how you're going to feel loved in the company of others. And planning for it. Planning for finances, holiday shopping, decorations, whatever you do, right? How you're investing your time and your energy and even your money into spending time with people. Because I'm seeing that you have gone through a pretty, a pretty big shift recently here. I think that have happened for you with the full moon in Aries, right? A couple weeks ago. And I think that that was a big cycle ending and a brand new cycle beginning. They're right next to each other. This is an auspicious combination for me when I see it in reading. The world next to the fool. This is the last in the hero's journey in the major arcana. You've achieved something, learned a life lesson, or achieved a, a goal, figured something out about your life, about yourself, about how you want to move forward. It makes you feel like you've achieved something or learned something really important. And then, okay, next. Now what? The next step is to go back around that zodiac wheel to the beginning again. A new beginning with the fool and being excited about it. And this very much can be Aries energy, right? Excited, ready to go. You don't overthink it too much. You just kind of go on an intuition, go on an instinct. This in the center of your reading today, Aries, is the absolute perfect card for you because not only are we having a new moon this week, but it is opposing Uranus. And Uranus is bam, like lightning. It's a lightning strike. It can be surprising. It's expect the unexpected. So this can be an unexpected, what I would call spontaneous new beginning. And you just jump in. It's like somebody says, hey, you want to go to Mexico for the holiday? And you're like, yeah, let's go. And then you start planning with that page of pentacles and all those wands in the air, texting back and forth, sending emails, making the plan. Let's just remember Venus does go into retrograde uh, December 19th. That is when the money doesn't flow in so much, right? So it's like after you spent a bunch of money on holidays or a bunch of presents, and then you got to tighten the belt. 
Venus in retrograde, right? So it's not flowing in. It's a lot's going out, not so much coming back in. So I'm saying this season right now, for this holiday season, you want to be a bit frugal because we're going into a Venus retrograde. Now, right now, Venus forward in Capricorn is good. It's a good time for money, right? But be aware <laughs> that by December, it's going to go retrograde and Venus does stay in Capricorn for four months. That's a very long time to be in one sign. It's usually about a month or so. So, wow, is that important to think about. So we've got the world and we've got the fool. And then the seven of swords. So that's why I'm saying it's like, hey, you want to just take off somewhere to Mexico or wherever? Could be anything. The seven of swords is like, it's kind of like an escape, but I'm seeing it with these two cards together. It's like something that is so exciting and a big opportunity for you to do something where you just kind of run away somewhere. That's kind of how I'm seeing. It could be a romantic getaway. It could be It could be also that if something was taken from you previously, and like a job, let's say you interviewed for a job and you got through the third or fourth interview and it was down to you and some other person and you were more qualified but the other person got the job because of nepotism or something like that, it could come back to you. Okay, so if that, if this seven of swords represents something that was taken that was yours, this opportunity could come back around with the world and fool. Okay? It could come back to you. Because above that is the three of wands. And I'll show you that on the vertical here in a second. Then I see the six of swords. You can see why I said taking a trip. But, oh, the guilt. And the sorrow about it. So, this could be many things. I'm going to take a look at it a little bit deeper. But you may talk yourself out of it. You may say, I can't, I can't afford it, I, you know, but you really might want to go. With the Six of Swords, we're moving forward from conflict. So you are moving forward from perhaps this in the past where maybe you lost that job or maybe you couldn't do something that you really wanted to do and you went through a real almost depression. Well, that is changing and you're moving forward from the conflict now. Whatever you let go of at that Aries full moon, I think Aries. It's time for that portion of, of the emotional pain, the, the deep wounds, right? Remember, Scorpio is a season of life, death, and rebirth. It's when we do have to learn how to look at our wounds and our fears and our pain and grief and comfort ourselves through it and then let it go. And remember that the season's will come and the seasons will go and that's kind of how I'm seeing it's like you're you're mentally and emotionally letting go of a season that was maybe difficult and in the center of your reading maybe deciding to do something for yourself just on the spur of the moment at the new moon because you really really want to feel a sense of joy again a sense of happiness so you could be invited somewhere. Let's go down the vertical and, and we'll suss this out just a little bit more. So again, getting a message, page of pentacles, the world, an accomplishment. So if you just got a new job, it's going to help you move forward. If this is about somebody asking you out or making a new friend and it's like it, it feels like a new beginning to you somehow. It's new energy in your life and something that you might want to have in the long term. So it could be anything, that Page of Pentacles, but it made you feel like you you got to the end of that old difficult phase. It gave you hope that you could move forward again, okay? Then lots of communication about a new beginning, and this new beginning kind of pulls you out of the sadness or the depression or the feeling of just being devoid of joy. It pulls you out of it. And you're like, you know what? I will. I deserve to dot, dot, dot. So you talk about it. You make plans. And you just decide to go. You just decide to, to start something or do something brand new. 
And this, that's how it's going to feel to you. It's going to remind you that you're still alive. It's going to feel revitalizing. And a new moon can do that. And then the Three of Wands, because you're looking into your future now and you're starting to see the light of the sun again. You're starting to feel hopeful again. That there's something new coming in for you that you can look forward to, right? It's about looking forward to someone, something. Because I think in the past, you felt like something was taken from you. And maybe it really, really got you down and really hurt you. And so now you need to, you know that you're in a season where it's time to look forward and not look back. And maybe that's the season that you're in now. So I, I honestly see, Aries, that looking forward is exactly what you want to do. This is new energy, Page of Pentacles, making it real, planting the new seed at the new moon. This is new energy. Taking a chance with Uranus, right? spontaneously just jumping in now going back to the dependability card I guess what I want to say is if somebody makes you an offer that seems too good to be true it's probably something you should question right if somebody makes a lot of promises if that's a promise of something in the future that page of Pentacles consider yeah I don't know about that I've been burned before. And ask yourself, how do I really feel about it? And trust yourself first and foremost. But if it's somebody that you trust and they're saying, you know, look, look, pal, you know, you've been down a lot lately. Why don't we go do this? And you really trust this person, that's the person to listen to. But most importantly, if it's someone you trust, how are you going to feel inside? You're going to feel like, yeah, they're right. They're right. I need a new lease on life. So trust your own feeling. Trust yourself about that. But if the person's like, hey, we'll go here and I promise I'll, t I'll pay for everything. And, right? And you're like, yeah, right. You've said that before. <laughs> it's like, if it's something like that, again, trust yourself. Trust what you think about what's being said, what's being promised, what's being offered. Depend on yourself and that'll tell you whether or not you know you can depend on somebody else. Because in the end, this is how you want to feel again. And this Wheel of Fortune is bringing it. it is, life is offering you a new lease on life where you can feel something and again that feels really good. And, you know, I'm talking to many different Aries people, so it could be so many different things in your life, but whatever it is, you're coming out of a real slump. You are. And you're moving somewhere better. You're moving forward in your life into feeling better, thinking better thoughts, thinking with more positivity about your future and where your future's going. And so I say just hold on to that. Grab onto this Eight of Wands energy that comes in, this new injection at the new moon, this spontaneous thing that happens at the new moon being opposite Uranus and Taurus. Something new, right? Taurus is Earth. So it's something real in your day-to-day -day life that, that could just come in like an injection of fun, an injection of hope, an injection of inspiration with all those wands. Something that makes you feel like this can now be let go of. The sadness, the grief, the remorse, the regret. That can be let go of now, right? It had its season. You gave those feelings the appropriate time to go through them, to deal with them, to feel them. And maybe throughout the rest of Scorpio season, this will be the final letting go process, right? From the full moon, as it wanes and the light of the full moon wanes smaller and smaller and smaller into that sliver of the new moon, that darkest part, that's the, the final shedding, the final letting go of what the full moon is doing for us. And with the new moon, then it starts to get bigger and bigger and wax, and as it gets brighter and brighter, it culminates. So whatever you're doing at this new moon, I think it's gonna be spontaneous. 
and I think it's going to make you feel something you haven't felt in quite a while. It could be romantic, it could be familial, it could be with your friends, but whatever it is, maybe think about it. Consider it. Consider being spontaneous. But first and foremost, trust your gut. Trust you about who you can trust and why. Okay? All right, Aries, I wish you kindness, reverence, and gratitude. Have a great week. Have a great new moon. And um, I hope you enjoyed Halloween. Yeah. Okay, so I'll talk to you next week. Thanks so much.